Hello, Tracy here at Colorantic. I'm the English sales director and I'm with the owner, Marianne. We're here to answer uh, some frequently asked questions. And so uh, the first question we have is from Vicki and she'd like to know, is there any specific advice for using your products? Uh, yes, yeah, some surfaces uh, um, require uh, more preparation than others, um, such as um, varnish uh, furniture, uh, when you don't know what was applied before on old furniture, for example. And if it's very shiny, uh, that's uh, something that you need to check. Uh, sometimes, most of the time, what I do is I use a uh, uh, nail polish remover uh, and a cotton ball or a makeup uh, sponge and then I uh, apply it on the surface and I see if it's coming uh, off uh, on the cotton ball or on the sponge then it means that it's water-based so you don't really need something else than uh, light sanding or a, a bit of or cleaner um, sprayed on the surface uh, but sometimes when uh, it has uh, an oil base varnish or paint uh, it won't come off uh, on the sponge or on the cotton ball so that means that you really need our uh, oil based uh, primer uh, on the surface before you start applying the paint because uh, after a couple months your furniture uh, the paint will will uh, come off and you don't want that to happen so it's better off to do a good prep and not to uh, redo your furniture uh, but we can use our paint on most surface because we still have a light primer a water-based primer in each of our color each of the jar contains a small amount of primer water base so you can use our paint on uh, glasses such as uh, mason jars. Uh, you can use it on the walls, but you just need to add a glaze on, in it so it's more washable on uh, walls. Uh, you can use it on out, outdoor doors, uh, outside doors. Um, what you need to do is like because uh, it's outside, you need a primer before, no oil base primer. Uh, but on most furniture, you don't require any prep ex if it's not shiny, if it doesn't have an oil paint or an oil uh, based varnish. So you can apply the paint directly, but like always check if you need the light sanding and the cleaner is always good to remove the dust and the dirt on the furniture and also because uh, it will uh, bring the surface um, very uh, uh, like ready to, to be used. So, uh, question two, it's coming from Isabel. She's asking, what are the steps to do when you're starting a project? Okay. The first step, uh, like Marianne has explained before, is uh, always find out what the surface is that you're working on. So whether it was an oil varnish or an oil paint beforehand, you do a little test. Uh, after that, it is to come in with our cleaner and varnish remover. So you take it, it's in a spray bottle, you spray all over your surface. Uh, you allow to work for about 30 minutes. Uh, sometimes if you would like it to work a little more, you can take a spray bottle with a little bit of water, spray it on top. That helps reactivate the cleaner and it'll help uh, remove any of those layers that were there before. After that, we take uh, just a little pail with a cloth. So you take your pail, your cloth um, with uh, warm water and you go and you remove any of the remover that you just applied so that will be taking off any grease any dirt uh, any previous product that was existing on your piece of furniture so i uh, i rinse it well and often i'll go back i will change my water and come back again with a clean pail of water do another quick um, pass with my cloth 
just to see if there's anything left. If you find that the texture is still a bit tacky, that means that you haven't removed enough of the previous product that was on there. So you would go back in again with your cleaner, spray it again, let it have time to work, come back in again and do a little rinse. And uh, after that, uh, your surface will be ready to start painting. Um, also, it's suggested, depending on what kind of surface that you are painting, to come in and use a primer, especially if something was painted with an oil or something, if you're not quite sure what was there existing, then it just gives a good seal on your product to give a good start, a good base, so that when you spend all this time doing the preparations, it might be a little bit longer, but in the long run, it pays off because your paint is gonna stay uh, you won't have chipping, you won't have any peeling, and your color will last a lot longer. So the third question that we have is from Chantal, and she would like to know, what do you suggest when applying a colored wax? So Tracy, there's two steps to use uh, wax on our furniture, on our projects. Uh, you always want to start with the natural wax before you apply it evenly and then you take a cloth and re remove the exceedance and then you take another color of wax that you want like the brown, the black, white, gray or the new one that we uh, are launching soon um, it, and then you apply it where you want the effect to be applied on your furniture um, so that way you don't have the exceeding, the excess wax, and it doesn't uh, stay on your furniture and it doesn't uh, stay greasy for a long time. Because what you need to remember is also uh, a varnish dry in four hours, uh, but wax uh, can take up to seven days to 14 days to dry. So the two uh, type of paint brushes we recommend at Colorantic for uh, our waxes um, is uh, the 16 millimeter and we also have an XL uh, round paint brush. So the round paint brush are used for wax, whereas oval brushes are used for paint. And why we are not using synthetic and, uh, instead of our silk, it's because the silk filament will uh, absorb the wax more on the filament and then will apply it evenly on the surface. And whereas the synthetic will uh, have a, a harder time to uh, apply it evenly until the end. And that's the same thing for the clot, why we're not using a clot, why we don't recommend a clot at Colorantic to apply our wax, waxes is because um, the wax will stay on the surface at, at first, but won't stay until the end. And also you lose a lot of wax on your cloth rather than staying on the silk filament on the paintbrush. Another tip that I wanna to talk to you is also um, about uh, the, the number of brushes that you need. I always have a paintbrush for each color, but I, rec I know that if you don't want to purchase uh, like five or six paintbrushes, round paintbrushes, what you could do is buy at least two, one for the light waxes and one for the darker tones. And then you write it on the handle with a Sharpie and you write if it's light or dark and uh, when you clean it, you, it's a good thing also to use our uh, mango uh, pumice, pumice soap uh, because it will remove e easily our wax rather than using uh, regular soap or a dish soap. Uh, we recommend our pumice soap so it has little grains in it and it's easier to remove the wax from our wax brushes. Question four, um, 
Diane asked, uh, can I apply a varnish on top of a wax? No, I, it's not recommended. Um, wax is already a greasy substance. So if you apply your varnish on top, it's just never gonna allow to have the proper effect of your wax. And it might always stay kind of tacky and never properly harden. So if you would like to use a varnish, we recommend you apply your varnish to your surface first and afterwards come in with your waxes. And if you wanna just go in and enhance some details, you come in, you apply uh, on a molding, on a chair leg and the corners, just to give it that little aged effect. And uh, so no, uh, varnish is not recommended. The next question we have is from Suzanne, and she'd like to know, do we ha absolutely have to use a varnish? Uh, the answer is no, Tracy. Uh, we don't need um, a varnish because our paint contains uh, a little bit of a water-based primer in it, and um, it depends on the surface. So if, for example, you're doing your painting a tabletop surface or um, bathroom or kitchen cabinets, I would recommend varnish or glaze. A glaze is a semi gloss and varnish or varnish is matte. So depend what you want as a finished product. Um, but it's recommended mostly if you have kids or pets and if it's the type of furniture that you're uh, going to use often or add a glass of water on it so that if you are doing that it's if it's a coffee table for example you'll want to use a varnish or a protector so uh, miriam is asking can we use the chalk based paint on all surfaces uh, such as ceramic glass fabric or metal and the answer is yes, our chalk paint can be used on any type of surface. It's just the preparation that is different for each item that you wish to paint on. So if you're wanting to paint on a mason jar, a ceramic tile, a window, there's a step that's different than painting on wood. You would wash your surface and afterwards uh, you come in and you would do a fine sanding just to remove some of the gloss so that your paint has something to adhere to and then I would apply a, a coat of primer and the next step would be to apply your paint. If you are wanting to just paint a, a item that's in wood these same um, steps aren't necessary I, as long as you know what the surface is that you're painting on. If you have an old wood trunk and you know that it's very old, it probably has a, an oil base, either paint or varnish on it. I, you would go in, use our cleaner and varnish remover, do a little rinse, do a little sanding because those oil products were often very shiny. So you want your paint to adhere. Again, apply your oil primer and then you would be uh, ready to paint using uh, any color that you choose. You can also use our chalk paint based paint to paint uh, material. So if you decide that you're tired of that old lazy boy, um, even if you'd like to paint on a decorative pillow, uh, just add a bit of color to a room. Um, the same thing, it's the preparation. Um, that's always the same step we repeat continually to our questions. People don't like to take that extra step, but that extra step is so worth it because in the end you get a good final product and you get something that's going to last a very long time. So the next question we have today is from Julie and Julie would like to know what is your glaze used for? So um, uh, the glaze is a semi-gloss, whereas our wax and varnish are matte. Um, I'll explain you a little bit of history, uh, why a glaze was used in the old time and 
how uh, we came out with a varnish in the history. So, um, like a couple hundred years ago, the the Flamen painter used um, glaze, clear glaze to add in the paint to bring enhancement to the paint and also had um, like the protector in the paint so they didn't have to redo a coat of uh, glaze after it. And most of them, the, that those painter uh, used uh, that on the ceiling of churches so it's still nice you're still able to go in churches and see the ceiling and it it last uh, lasted a long time and so the first step to why we are using a glaze is the protector as I just explained the second one is to add glitter in our clear glaze so you'll have the protector in the the glitter and it will apply uh, the glitter evenly on the surface. The third one, the third reason we want to use glaze is for fabric, such as couches or uh, like uh, cushions that you want to paint. Uh, so you add clear glaze with the paint and a little bit of water, and it will um, bring uh, the fabric to have uh, more elasticity in the fabric, in the material. And that's another video that you can watch too because we already did a couple of video about fabric painting. You can go on our website to see other video and on YouTube. And the four reason why we're using glaze is to uh, have a stain effect. So you'll mix uh, two thirds of gla clear glaze with one, four, one third of paint and it will um, it will do like a stain like for this one we used our truffle color and we mixed it with our clear glaze and you can have like a yellow stain or a red stain and you won't find that anywhere else but you can make your own by mixing the two components and you'll have your own stain color and you'll see the you'll be able to see the wood through and the grain of wood if you want to keep uh, if you want to keep the the wood effect on your furniture so those were the four reasons why we're using glaze so Celine is asking how do i know uh, if I use enough cleaner on my surface. So to find out if you've used enough, first indication will be if your surface is still tacky, sticky effect, you have not removed enough of uh, the old finish that was there or the grease, the grime. So we recommend that you go back in, uh, liberally spray your surface again, allow that time to work, uh, I've also recommended before using a, a spray bottle that you can get from the dollar store. Just put a little bit of water in it, spray over top of your cleaner. This goes in and helps uh, activate the cleaner so you'll see it working. You can even watch it sometimes and you'll see that uh, the paint is lifting up or the varnish and uh, to come back in and do a really good rinse afterwards. So you take your bucket, warm water, a uh, clean cloth, uh, you wipe everything off, uh, again, empty that bucket of water, have another clean bucket and wipe it down again. After the second time, everything should be clean. Um, like I explained, if there's no more tackiness to it, then your, your surface is ready and you'll be able to start painting or go on to your next step. So today we have a question from Sylvie and Sylvie would like to know what type of brush do I use to apply varnish? So uh, we have different types of paint brushes at Colorensic. We have flat brushes, uh, we have round brushes and we have oval brushes. Um, for varnish, I often recommend the flat angular and flat regular paint brushes. We have three types at Colorantic. We have 
this little one uh, it's a medium size so it's the 38 millimeter that's the name of that brush it's uh, very pretty it's purple and it's synthetic it goes really well we also have the white uh, angular brush it's called 50 millimeter this one is a bit larger so it's for bigger projects and we have the flat snow white it's very thin and uh very affordable too and you can use it for smaller projects uh, for a varnish a uh, thing that you need to remember is you don't mix your paint brushes if you use that one for uh, varnish for instance don't use it for paint afterwards you know, like separate your paint brushes from paint to varnish and uh, the round paint brushes are used for wax and we recommend using the oval brushes for paint. Um, something that you want also to consider is when you start your project, you want to apply the paint, the angular or flat uh, paint brushes. But something that you want to try is um, our velvet foam rolls. They are very soft. Uh, the varnish goes very evenly on the surface so you can either choose to buy our kit like the tray the complete tray with the two rolls and the handle or we have also two set of refills so we have the two rolls in the pouch and um, that will help apply the paint evenly from the start to finish you also want to consider uh, sanding lightly your surface with a higher type of grains. Uh, so that like in between the two uh, layers of varnish. And I also recommend applying two to three coats of varnish on your projects because often the first time that you apply varnish on the first coat, you might see some lines. So that means that you don't have enough varnish on your furniture and um, you need to apply a second coat or a third one. So our last question today uh, is coming from Christiane. She's asking, why uh, does my wax doesn't cure for uh, and it stays on the furniture for a long time? So there's two reasons that this could be happening. The first is you didn't allow your paint to have enough time to cure. The second thing is you might have applied your wax too thick and it hasn't had time to uh, cure. A wax is not like a paint. It takes a lot longer to dry, to harden, to cure. It can take at least seven days or more all depending on your conditions when you applied your paint, when you applied your wax. If you're in an area that's very humid, it's been very hot, you have to take into consideration that all these things are gonna take longer to harden. So if you find that when you're wiping it down with a uh, cloth, you're removing that wax, probably you applied your wax too thick to start with and second of all it didn't have enough time to harden if you find that you're not having that effect that you really wanted you can come in with our cleaner and varnish remover spray in that little area what you're not happy with remove it uh, with a clean white cloth we suggest using a, an old white t-shirt that way uh, you can see what you're removing and go back in and reapply the wax just try not to do it too thick and give it the proper time to harden in between to cure so i think that answers uh, all the questions all the questions yeah. that we've had and if you have any further questions don't hesitate to reach out to us uh, you can reach me at tracy at colorantic.com uh, you can reach us by phone at 819-795-4442 uh, you can also ask your questions on Instagram or Facebook. 
Uh, every day we check these, so we go in and uh, answer your questions. And we also have a team that's available on weekends. We usually check it about twice a day. So if you ask a question on the weekend, uh, somebody will uh, get back to you as soon as they can. Thank you, Tracy. Have Thank a nice day. Have a good day. Bye.